side, and this is going to keep the swing from sliding. It's just something that you kind of learn how to do as you go along. It's not going to slide too far, but you can feel it's like, oh, it's going somewhere. So inhale, arch. Exhale, pull it in. Use your core. Five on this side. Arching and opening. Exhale, squeeze. Make sure you get right into the very center of your navel to, to bring out all the organs and then arch and open and lengthen the front of the spine. So we do really, t I take my time working some of these traditional yoga poses to really get um, the maximum benefit out of them instead of just like flinging around, you know? Um, I slow it down and create a little bit more of the therapeutics with some of these. Even though it's a really simple pose, if you really pull your fingertips forward, you're really engaging the front of your spine and it's a lot of work. If you try to kind of like just hold yourself there, then it is a lot of strength. So you can depend, depending on the level, the people you're doing, you can go a little bit deeper with them and actually do, you know, some more core training and do that whole thing. I, I really don't particularly love it in yoga where they do kind of like the, the soldier march. But you can do lots of core from here too. And I'm just telling you the variations as we go along. Okay, so cool. So after doing the one-legged lifts, the cat's meows, we're gonna lift, um, let's go back to the original leg. Wrap your right foot X outside in, right? Press it straight, beautiful. So let's just first come into a one-legged down dog here, press back. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk our foot forward, walk your hands back, and try coming into a standing slit. Center your foot a little bit more. Just notice how much deeper you can come into the slits here. Try dropping down. Um, I don't know how many of you guys do standing slits on a daily basis, but they're not that great for me. So this makes them way more interesting and accessible. So, so just the, the foot that's up in the air in the swing, yeah. Are you pointing the foot and stretching it straight, like towards the ceiling? Yeah, yeah. It could be wrapped around and really just bring your head down towards the standing leg, and that's what creates the split. Okay. Yeah. So just try going a little bit deeper. See what that feels like. See, try lifting your hands up. You might slide away, but see what it's like to do no hands and just play a little bit in the space, just for fun. <laughs> So you can kind of like test your balance and play around a little bit more. If you want to go into the full pose, you can clasp your hands behind your head. Usually I just let myself swing then. <laughs> this is gonna happen anyhow. <laughs> right, so in every one of the poses we can play a little bit more. Okay, so you can start out with just the one-legged down dog or Bring them into standing splits or arm balances. So arm balances are a little bit tricky. Okay? Of course, that would be more advanced. Okay, so from here, the last thing I want to do with the one legged down dog is do the same thing where we're going to lift and pull in, lift and pull in. Nice. So more core strengthening, right? More arm engagement, kind of preparation for handstands. Beautiful. Lift and pull it. It's endless. Honestly, I just want to give you guys like three in each one so it's not too overwhelming, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's come back through center. We're going to switch sides. So neutralize the spine in the down dog. Walk it out. Take your time. Inhale, left leg comes out. Hooks on the outside, one-legged down dog, hang out here for a few breaths, make sure that feels good, yep, nice straight leg, and then walk your head in towards your shin, walk your hands back, whatever, <laughs> whichever direction you want to go to get the full expression. Only go as good as it feels for today, you always can go deeper later. Just kind of play with the breath. So I usually pulse and inhale and lift a little bit and exhale go back in. And that usually helps me go deeper as well. And then if you can, you're going to release your hands. You're going to practice balancing. You can.
then clasp your hands behind your back. So completely like unnecessary, by the way. Only if you want to have some fun with it. When I had my other foot in the swing that I could do, uh -huh. maybe my foot was in the swing different. But I felt like I could point my toe, and now with the left one, it feels like if I do that, it's going to fall out of the swing. So it's like automatically flexed. Well, you can put flex then. Okay. Yeah. It's really about how much you come down. That puts tension on on that leg that's wrapped. That okay. makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's usually what it is. Like if you're just yeah, if, yeah, exactly. <laughs> good, good question. Anybody else? Is everybody good in this one? Mm -hmm. Let's try a twist. Keep that uh, right left leg hooked. Balance on your right hand and twist open. You can always grab for the opposite swing if you want to go a little deeper. Beautiful. Other side. Other side. Yep. Grab for the opposite swing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Come back through center. So one more time. Let's try that twist because we didn't do the twist one more. All right. Neutralize the spine only if you want to. Try hooking. Plant your left hand. Twist. Straight up and down is totally fine. If you want to reach back and grab for the other end of the swing. When I say other, it's not the easy side. <laughs> good. Beautiful. You're doing great. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is come down, bend the knee, keep the foot hooked. We're going to go into our upside down dog. Upside down dog is when both feet are hooked, outside in. Really good. Just get the leg loops out of the way if they are. And so in the upside down dog, I usually pull myself forward into like an up dog. So I use up dog and upside down dog interchangeably. Okay, I just get really easy. <laughs> so up dog is here, upside down dog is here. Heart comes down towards the ground. Okay, up dog looks a whole lot like a handstand, right? But we're stretching the front belly, that's why I call it up dog. Beautiful. Okay. And then let the heart completely relax towards the ground. Keep the arms engaged so you're sucking up into the armpits. The arms are completely flat. Can you feel the difference? Lift the armpits. Wait. Yes, no? Yeah. So let, let the totally arms. I'm totally slipping up. <laughs> I'm going to keep the knees bent. Okay, hold on. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. You can just watch for a second. Okay. So keep the knees bent. If you lift your legs, you're going to slide up because the knees are in the anchor point, right? You didn't go over the anchors too much, so it's really good for us to review. If we lift our legs, then yes, we lose our anchor. So this is the difference. This is fully relaxed. This is engaged. So it's like you hollow out your armpits to keep your arms nice and straight. So upside down dog is different than completely relaxed. Okay? So Heather, what's going on? I don't know. So come into down dog. So we always do one step at a time. Okay. So from down dog, hook your right foot outside in, keep the knee bent. Mm -hmm. Then you hook your left foot, keep the knee bent. Good. Keep your feet down, knees bent towards your belly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Really good. So pull yourself forward, handstand arms, and then press yourself back. Let's just do this five times. Inhale, pull yourself forward. Really good. Exhale, press. Very good. Inhale, lift, exhale. Even when we exhale, we keep the arms engaged, right? So we keep that arm strength. Next time you pull yourself forward, we're gonna just practice tucking. So tucking is coming into a handstand position. Do you need me to help you to get into this? Are you good, hon? Um, I can help you out. Okay, good. Thank you. So we're in handstand, right? Keep your feet hooked. Knees bent more, Keon. Down is okay. down, down towards the ground. There you go. So just slide your feet down towards your butt. Yes. Okay. Now tuck. Tuck means you're going to bring your hips over your head and then lengthen your belly. Good. So practice that balance. So your hips are pointing forward, shoulder distance apart. So you're going to tuck, pull your hips over your head, and then. Lengthen and arch. Just do five.
decide it at your own pace. Tucking is preparing us to do handstands. So Keon, you have to keep your knees bent, hun. We're not coming into full handstands yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so tuck, and then lift. So that's our little handstand preparation. That's all we're doing today in the basic class, is to get people to get some confidence, some shoulder strength, get the alignment first, make sure their hands are nice and strong underneath, directly in line with their shoulders, and then they can practice getting their hips over their head without falling over. So we always keep our knees bent. So you can bend your knees more, Heather. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Now we're just going to release back down to the ground. Okay. Take a little break here. So that was all of one and two. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to just do, again, some play things. <laughs> At least these are, these are my play things. So from this position, um, this looks kind of like a chaturanga, right? So we have our chaturanga arms, and then we're going to practice pulling the knee into the elbow crease. Okay? So knee to elbow. So just try doing one side and the other. And you can actually get a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of swing going which would make it a whole lot easier <laughs> if we just pull ourselves forward. So just try going, yep, side to side, keeping, keeping your um, feet no higher than your hips. Keon, your feet have to be level with the earth. The chaturanga is when you're level, yeah. Okay. And then try rolling it in. If you bring, if you go past zero, you go past that level point, it's a different pose. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, just for today, in the beginner class, we always keep our hips. If you go up too high, you're going to fall out of the swing. So we just keep that nice anchor strong at the hip flexor. Awesome. Great. So now we're going to try both knees. I call this the frog jump. And then you press back. So it's a little rivet there. It also looks like you're popping into crow pose. If you wanted to stick it, <laughs> hold it there at the top. A little challenging to hold, but you can try. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I like the frog jump better. Nice and flat. Good. Very good, Heather. Good job, everybody. Okay, so one last thing we're going to do is push ups. Put the feet outside in. Okay, get your hands right underneath you. And so these are more like handstand push ups, but we're going to pretend like there are chatter like chaturangas. So just come into 10 push ups at your own pace, your own rate. You can make them super easy or super hard, depending on your hand position. So play around a little bit and see what that looks like. But 10 push-ups of your own choice. Chaturanga push-ups is when your elbows squeeze to the sides of the body. Um, Army push-ups is when your elbows come out to the sides. I do recommend you keep your elbows in, but you can really do whatever you want. <laughs> it's a free country. So if you want to get really fancy with it and come into full handstand push-ups, you would do your tuck first and then try doing 10 push-ups. Oh yeah. <laughs> a little strengthening exercise. But it's really fun preparation for some of the acrobatics. And you don't fall over. <laughs> okay guys, let's let's end up in our forward fold wide straddle. <sighs> Good job. You guys did great. So we're halfway through the day one. We're going to get into the floating Buddha and the chillaxing sequence, which is super fun. But I want you guys to just slowly come up, hold on to the swing, and come up. So usually what I do to give people a break is I go back and forth. I'll start out with them uh, with the swing behind the back. We'll do our whole little squat, lunge, back bend sequence. I spend a lot of time in back bends. Like, really, it's just my favorite. It's so nice to feel like you can do a supported back bend. From here, we can come into back bend drops and come into like full wheel and all that jazz. I've been playing with some other balancing poses where we actually do back walkovers and things like that. So, there's lots of different ways, directions you can take it in, which are really fun. But for today, we're just going to be really up. But just know that there's every sequence that we 